It looks like you hit bombs. And I said, I dropped bombs over Baghdad, just like Outcast. And so I joined the Celebration Church Softball League and I struck out a lot. Um, but I don't want to talk about it. What happened when I joined that team is I met guys. I met Luke McCann and Mike Wallace and Brett Niemeyer. I met Pastor James Price and Clint Hendry and Pastor David and Ron Dubois were on the teams. And here's what happened. I came in not knowing anybody. I just played baseball growing up. That's all. I just knew how to play baseball. And so what happened was I met these guys. So now when I came to church on Sunday morning, I had guys that knew me and I had guys that I knew. So I immediately felt like I belonged. I had guys that if I weren't there that were like, hey, bro, where were you at? I didn't see you this Sunday. Everything going okay? But here's the deal. And I just want to put some of your minds at rest right now. It wasn't weird. The softball team wasn't weird. We all have these ideas that Christian connect groups or church small groups are weird. And we do weird things. And we're not like normal people. Like you walk in and someone's like, here's a snake and a tambourine. We'll get together in a second and see how everything goes out. Listen, we just played softball. We just played softball. That's all we did. When guys got up to bat, like when Pastor James got up to bat, we didn't say, okay, guys, Pastor James batting now. Let's huddle up for a prayer circle. God... Mmm, <laughs> Jesus, holy is your name. God, we pray that right now that uh, you would help Pastor James get on first base because you know he runs like an old fat horse, Jesus. <laughs> get him on that base. We didn't do any of that. There was no weirdness. We were dudes. We were picking on each other. We were teasing each other and we were playing softball. But what was happening is it was giving us all a place to belong. It was giving us all a sense of community. We were guys that were knowing each other and we were guys that were being known by others. So it made us feel like we fit and this is where we were supposed to be. And some of you in here, what you need more than anything else is just to feel like you belong. You just need to feel like, man, this is the place for you. And can I just say this? You coming in and sitting in this arena just makes you a tender. It doesn't always make you a part of what's going on here. Sometimes you got to get down into it. Sometimes you got to go a little bit deeper and it's not going to be weird. Just know this. When people get saved, can I just, I feel like my goal as a pastor is to make Christianity normal. When people get saved, you're still who you are. It's not like you get saved and all of a sudden you're like, Jesus, I love you. And you turn into this weird robot person that all you can do is quote scripture and then point out other people's sins. That's not what it is. It's just Christians getting together who are trying to go on the same trajectory of being more like Jesus Christ. And sometimes we need to feel like we have a place where we belong. And you're never going to feel like you belong until you are in relationships and in groups with people where other people know who you are and what's going on in your life. The first thing that connect groups do, connect groups help you belong or give you a place to belong. The second thing that connect groups do is connect groups help sharpen you. We use this verse all the time. Pastor Stovall referenced it last week. Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. There are some of you in here, if we're very honest with ourselves, you need some friends in your life that are going to help sharpen you and not dull you. You need some friends in your life that see more potential in you than you even see in yourself right now. You need some friends in your life that are going to tell you that you can be a better dad, you can be a better mom, you can be a better businessman or businesswoman or a better man of God or a better woman of God. You need some friends that are going to speak encouragement and life into you instead of dulling you. You need some people that are going to challenge you. You need some people that are going to help sharpen you. You need some people that are going to push you to be better. You need some people in your life that aren't going to settle for who you are right now because they see that God has so much more in you. All of us need that. And connect groups help sharpen you. Connect groups help you be more like Jesus Christ. And listen, that is all our goal, hopefully, is to be more like Jesus Christ 10 minutes from now than we are right now. And we need friends that are going to sharpen us. And even as I say that, some of you can think to yourselves, I definitely need different friends. You show me your, the five people in your life that influence you more than anybody else, and I'll show you a trajectory for your future. 
You show me the five people that you allow to speak into your life, and I'll show you where your future is going to end up. I've been a youth pastor, I guess, for almost 10 years now. Thank God Pastor Clay stepped in, and he's the youth pastor now, so that helped me quit drinking. And um, I'm just playing. <laughs> Can I, just, can I just say something, like, as, a, as someone that has seen a lot of your children walk this out from sixth grade to twelfth grade, it's amazing what changes in a student when they start surrounding themselves with different people. I can, I can follow a student's life, and then when they get with a certain group of friends, I can see all hell break loose in their life. Listen, we need to set the example for some of our children. And we need to make sure as parents that we're surrounding ourselves with the right people. That's why I quit hanging out with Pastor James. <laughs> I have a microphone right now and you don't, so you can't do anything. <laughs> but we need to set the example. Can I just give you parents a tip? I, this, is, this has nothing to do with my sermon. Follow your children on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter for the love of God. Some of your kids post stuff, and I'm like, oh, oh, God, their mom doesn't know about that. My son, he's going to think I work for the CIA. <laughs> My daughter, if they get with the wrong group of friends, we're moving to Alaska. <laughs> he will build igloos and club baby seals. I'm just kidding. He ain't going to do that. E easy. <laughs> Someone's like, I'm calling PETA. Um, we got to make sure that we surround ourselves with people that sharpen us, but so many of us don't do it. And you know why we don't do it? Because it's easier to hang out with people that only tell you what you want to hear. It's easier to hang out with people that only agree with you. It's easier to hang out with people that just go along with everything that you say. It's easier to hang out with people that think you're the greatest thing in the world and there's nothing that you could do to be better than what you are right now. It's easier. It's hard to be sharpened. There's friction and there are sparks. And sometimes you're going to get rubbed the wrong way. And sometimes as someone is pushing you to be better than what you currently are for the glory of God, you're going to get offended. But just because something is hard doesn't mean that it's not right. My dad used to have a saying. He said, the path of least resistance is what makes rivers and men crooked. He's a wise Sherpa. He's not. He's crazy and old, and he's in here right now. <laughs> the path of least resistance is what makes rivers and men crooked. Can I be honest with you? Not being a part of a connect group, not having anyone to speak into your life and challenge you and push you is definitely the path of least resistance. It's definitely the easiest thing to do. It's easy to come in here and have no one know what's going on in your life. It's easy to come in here and fill a seat. It's easy to not allow people into your past. It's easy to do that. But I can promise you this, as long as you take the easy way out, you will always continue to go around the mountain. You will always continue to struggle. You will always continue to try to do things on your own. It's easier, but just because it's easy doesn't mean it's right. I'll never forget, we had a guy at Sub 30. Uh, this was a couple years back now. We were having some trouble with him. He was kind of hitting on girls and saying some things he shouldn't have been saying. And so we, we were kind of having some issues with him. And it was getting to the place where we were actually getting ready to get him to leave uh, Sub 30 and just say, hey, man, we just feel like you need to come on Sundays right now. You're causing too many problems. And so on a, on a Wednesday night uh, during worship, Paul Tompkins, who is our director of Celebration School of Ministry, he brought him down. And he said, and Paul didn't know I knew what was going on. And the other guy didn't know that I knew what was going on either. Paul said, hey, man, so-and-so is going through a hard time, and I just I need you to pray with him. And I said, yeah, I'll pray with you, but first I need to tell you something. And I just went off on him. He didn't know that I knew, and it was like, oh, I was like, it was the Holy Spirit. No, I'm just playing. And so, like, so we just said, like, you can't do this. This is the deal. I'm going to pray for you. If we have these issues anymore, you're gone. Do you understand me? He said, yeah, that's fine. So we prayed for him, and as they were leaving, I said, Paul, here's what I need you to do. Paul has always led connect groups. Paul has always done a phenomenal job at sharpening other guys and making them, helping them to be more like Jesus Christ. I said, Paul, I need you to get him plugged in with you into one of your connect groups. This was almost two years ago. The guy that this man is today is completely and utterly different than who he was two years ago. 
You drove in because here's the deal. He helps park cars on Sunday mornings. He serves on Sunday mornings. On Wednesday nights, he actually leads teams of other leaders. He has been grown and developed and sharpened. And yes, that happened because of God. And yes, that happened because of the Holy Spirit. But it also happened because he decided that he was going to get transparent with some other men in his life. And he was going to allow some men, as difficult as it was, to sharpen him to make him more like Jesus Christ. So it's very easy for me as someone looking from the outside to look back at who he was two years ago and to say, you are a completely different man because you chose to train with transparency and get into some connect groups and allow some men and some friends to sharpen you to make you more like Jesus Christ. And some of you in here, that is your next step. It's to find some friends that you can be open and transparent with. It's to find some friends that can sharpen you. It's to find some friends that will maybe tell you what you need to hear instead of what you want to hear. Because listen, every one of us in this room, there are things that we need to hear. 